Namaste. So today is Guru Purnima. Purnima is the full moon. And this particular full moon during the month of June, July is uh, for honoring the Guru. So I think it's very appropriate that we're doing a series on the astrological chart of uh, unrecognized uh, great sage, realized being, uh, and that <laughs> this happens to occur on Guru Purnima is uh, one of the reasons why we say Guru is born, not made. In other words, no one becomes qualified to be a Guru in this life. Either one is born with the requisite qualifications and of course they may develop them or bring them out uh, by their work in their life. But basically they are born in their astrological chart with the qualifications for being guru. So far we've seen that this individual, the lagna or rising sign, gives them a deep mystical awareness of hidden things. They are a person who lives with one foot in the material world and one foot in the spiritual world. So they are like the way shower, the guide or conductor, the boatman who takes the souls to the other side. So this is a very appropriate <laughs> for someone to play the role of the guru because that's what guru does. And then we looked at the sun. And the sun gives this person the ability to explain and to present and to make everything very clear and bright that was formerly obscure, esoteric and difficult. So this is another qualification for this person's uh, role as a guru or teacher. Now today we're going to talk about the moon. Now of course the moon represents the mind and more deeply represents the heart. So the moon tells you more than anything how this person looks at things, what they see, because what you see in any place in this world is how you look, right? This is the fundamental truth of quantum mechanics, that what you measure is what you're going to see. <laughs> so anyway, the moon in this case is in Aquarius, 14 degrees, right in the middle. So the moon mantra is Aung Song So Maya Namaha. Calming, caretaking Chandra is responsible for scheduled emotional learning experiences designed to develop mastery in topics of sensitivity, emotional flow, dwelling, settlements, security, shelter, shell, kitchen, cooking, rhythm, ritual, rites, arithmetic, rate, pace, beat, roots, ruts, roots, routine, folkways, ancient habits, old customs, ways of life, seasons, climate, entrainment to the cycles of consciousness, patriotism, parochialism, property ownership, established ethnocultural norms, land and its people, gardens, farms, fisheries, basic schooling, protective boundaries, fencing, push-pull cycles, time and tide, and undulating motions. We can sum this all up in a single word, vibrations. The moon is the fundamental pulse 
or vibratory motion in our world. It's the moon that goes around once a month and triggers all the pending asterisms that bring the karma to life or to fruition. So the moon is the trigger, but the underlying structure of the person's chart is tells you what's going to happen when the moon triggers it. Uh, so in this case, the moon is in Aquarius. Aquarius in Sanskrit is called Kumbha. The socialite, comforted by networks, sensitive to connectivity, needs community, needs to network, a man of the people. Chandra in Kumbha forms supportive, equal partner relationships with Singha, political types, Leos in other words. Chandra Kumbha is often found in assemblies, community events, and promoting economic achievements. Chandra Kumbha is comfortable in large groups, holding roles such as fundraiser and cheerleader. Soma would normally prefer to partner with a politician, entertainer, or creative figure. Usually, Kumbha's mass movement identity is not seeking the center stage of life unless Shani, Saturn, requires it. So here we have a person who is like the power behind the throne. This person does not like to be a mover and shaker and occupy the center stage unless there are other aspects in the chart that demand it. This person likes to work in the background, but make the connections, create the situations, the contexts that allow things to happen. So in this case, the guru acting as a guru, a person like this, will create a system of thought, a network of ideas, an ontology, in other words, a language with which to describe the spiritual phenomena that will facilitate the spiritual advancement of the disciples. Kumbha means large, regulated, complex transactional systems. Kumbha's network transactions may be extremely diverse in appearance, but they are all ultimately regulated by a complex set of conceptual principles. Kumbha rules the common people, the masses, the gigantic and extremely complex, but indeed rule-driven network of human communications. Chandra in Kumbha produces a special effect on the life of the person. There is an aura of secrecy about him. Soft-spoken, he easily gains another's confidence. Interested in education, fine arts, music, social organizations, and political activities. As a result of these interests, he gains a large number of friends and acquaintances. He may become a member of secret or exclusive societies. So you see, this is another indication that this person has entree into the confidential spheres of life. In other words, he is not the kind of person to wear his heart on his sleeve. He can be very diplomatic. He can be extremely well-spoken and present all kinds of explanations in very convincing ways. And on top of all that, he makes you like him. Uh, he's the kind of person who always greets a friend with a smile. And this is not for political purposes. This is for the purpose of creating the atmosphere or again, a context where real communication can take place. These people are strong, physically courageous, yet passive, passionate, but kind-hearted. While their bodies are made for hard physical work and endurance, their lives are nearly always lived on a high mental plane, and they prefer mental activity to physical endeavor. They are intelligent, deep thinkers, extremely logical and scientific in their thought processes. They are quite likely to make a mark in the world because of their scientific attainments, although these are more often in the research field. 
In other words, this kind of person is not like an engineer that, that builds things. They're more like a research scientist that finds out the hidden connections, the natural laws that underlie all phenomena in the universe. And because they're extremely strong and have great endurance, they're capable of establishing projects that go on for years or even decades together, as long as they are certain of getting the result. So this is the kind of person with moon in Aquarius. They read extensively, and all the metaphysical sciences attract them. Yet, they always keep both feet on the ground and do not permit their philosophical concepts to run wild without the constant check of logical and scientific reasoning. They are extremely scornful of convention and are considered radical in their views because of their impatience with stupid and worn out ideas. They are the pioneers of new ideas, new thought, new inventions. So this is the kind of person who makes discoveries. And the reason they can do that is that they're free to let go of all outmoded theories and conventions. Albert Einstein had moon in Aquarius. <laughs> Somebody uh, asked Einstein, because so many scientists had written articles against his theory of relativity, they asked Einstein, aren't you afraid or aren't you uh, feeling bad that all these people uh, wrote against your discoveries? And he said, no. One fact is better than a hundred opinions. <laughs> he knew he was right. And of course, subsequent work has proven him right beyond a shadow of a doubt. So this is the position of someone in with Moon and Aquarius, they're ahead of their time. The stuff they're working on will become common knowledge in 50 or 100 years. So they're often uh, neglected or passed over or misunderstood simply because they are so grounded in practicality that they can see the, when the, the typical beliefs of the masses are, you know, outmoded, they simply ignore them and go on and do their thing, knowing that they are right in the end. Now, this person has this moon in the 12th house. So let's look at the 12th house for the moon. Visionary dreamer, invisible flow, research enclosures, familiar to the spirit guides, Emotional sensitivity to invisible private needs. Comfortably settled, nested, habituated to familiar rhythms of sanctuary, meditation, spiritual guidance, private prayer, imagination, sleep, the bedroom, distant lands, invisibility, and emotionally withdrawn. So this is again another prescription for guru, isn't it? The guru can read the disciple like a book. The guru can look deep into the disciple's heart, knows what he's thinking and feeling. He may say something about it, or he may not. Or he may create a situation in which the disciple's characteristics and real beliefs uh, beneath the false ego and personality and, and what they say they believe in, uh, come out to be acknowledged, recognized, and corrected. Professor Chandra's special area of instruction is emotional sensitivity, absorption of feelings from the local environment, and emotional reaction or response. Chandra in 12 is especially sensitive to the fluctuation of imagined feelings or feelings which respond to clairsentiently perceived environments. The child becomes familiarized, that's another aspect of Chandra, early in life with the experience patterns of private spiritual guidance, whether socially acknowledged or not, he has clairsentient sensitivity. 
Repetition of this familiar pattern reinforces a habitual sense of not belonging to this world. So this person is a stranger in a strange land. They operate on the subtle planes. Their real work is often completely invisible and unrecognized in the material sense. But their influence is profound and it spreads wide over the masses. And whether it's acknowledged or not, they have an extreme amount of ability to influence others. Just by their energy, they don't even have to say anything. <laughs> the kind of person who walks into the room and everything changes, the whole mood changes. The phenomena of bhava in 12 are typically seen through a glass darkly, if seen at all. It may seem to observers that one born with sensitive private Chandra in 12 does not acknowledge his own emotional patterns. Their feelings remain segregated from their rational and physical perceptions, a habitual distancing from others. Chandra in 12 seeks comfort in private environments, such as hospitals, monasteries, prisons, or distant lands, or alternatively, in their own contemplative imagination. Chandra in 12 is particularly sensitive to the needs of those who live in distant worlds, invisible places, dormitories, or enclosures. This type of person would make the perfect counselor, maybe in a hospice for people who are about to leave the body. Uh, but because they're so far advanced in their thinking, they usually don't meet the academic and social requirements for such a position. So they will often then withdraw into monastic seclusion. And this makes them difficult to approach. But if someone with the mood of a disciple can penetrate their uh, need for solitude, in other words, earn their trust, they stand to be given the greatest of blessings because this person is a powerful teacher. Now, the moon also conjoins the sun and Mercury. So, this is a new moon. This is a Chandra Surya Yoga. It is a generally favorable conjunction that makes the native confidently sensitive, a bright comforter, emotionally entitled to center stage attention. So there's lots more here and I'd love to go deeper into this, but we're running out of time. Basically, this person does not have to be the center of attention, but when they are, they carry it off beautifully. Now, as I said, they're mostly uh, comfortable in a secluded situation, one-on-one -on -one, or with a very small group. Why? Because big groups are always ruled by the consensus of the lowest common denominator. And so in, they're comfortable and they can operate in a big group. It's just that to really do their thing where they really shine is in the one-on-one -on -one individual relationship between the guru and disciple. So it's like this person was genetically engineered to be a guru in the Upanishadic sense. Upanishadic. Come close, sit down, and listen. Huh? So, with this, I'm going to uh, let this episode go, and we'll go on in the next one to Mercury. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.